Can you hear me? I Are can you there? hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's a little bit loud there, but uh, when you're speaking, the audio comes through, so we're good to go. Okay, I'll speak loud because I'm on the shop floor. Yeah. This is pure gold. Okay, the liberals are very scared today, and they should be. You know, I'm, I'm surprised uh, Tucker never came through with the... Uh, all the scandals so far by the liberal government. I'm surprised that they're still in power, Rick. Really, I am. Really, I am. You know? Yeah. We can start off with Albogate. Okay, that's where it all began. Albogate. There's just so many, uh, so many scandals it's hard to keep up to, right? The cash for assets, uh, access scandal. The Abby Khan scandal. The cultural uh, appropriation scandal, the SNC Lavalin scandal, blackface scandal, the We Charity scandal. It goes on and on, right? The RCMP investigation scandal in Nova Scotia. Crazy. The six thousand dollar a night scandal for the motel rooms. The Arrive Can scandal. The alleged Chinese interference scandal. It goes on and on. Oh, we got the Nazi in Parliament scandal. And now we have what scandal? He broke the Charter of Rights with the convoy. And people are going to pay. So these liberal MPs came out. They were scrummed. They say that Paul Yev should condemn what Tucker Carlson had to say very triggered to me what those politicians were saying was very intolerant they're really saying that they would like to crush their political opponents they're saying there's no place for that kind of talk in in this country this that kind of discourse and i disagree completely they're they're saying there's no room for conservative voices now i mean you can interpret what tucker carlson said in a number of ways and I don't agree with everything that he says, but I think that you're right. Largely what he's saying resonates with a huge portion of the population, maybe even today, a majority. I, I would not be surprised at all if the majority of Canadians, even, even new Canadians, agree with a lot of what he had to say. So what do you think of the reaction from those liberal members of parliament today? As a Canadian... And you as a Canadian or any Canadian, period, we have a right to go any way we want when it comes to voting. If we want to become MAGA, we could become MAGA, okay? These yeah. guys, are they're, they're clowns, okay, and uh, they're trying to suppress. It's just another way of them trying to suppress us, okay, uh, by calling Car uh, Tucker Carlson a racist and, uh, uh, well, it sounds familiar. Everything that they're calling him white supremacist a misogynist, everything else, kind of remin reminisces the uh, the same tone as the convoy movement. Mm -hmm. My view on this, Leo, is that these members of parliament, these liberals, Justin Trudeau himself, they really have to accept some responsibility for the rise of the you know people of, of people on the on the right side of the political spectrum because it's a reaction to their extremism in reality they're the ones who beat protesters in ottawa they're the ones who are throwing their political opponents in jail they're the ones who are passing legislation to invoke censorship and and suppress the, the voices of their political opponents. And the harder you squeeze, the, the more you do those kinds of things, those actions get, uh, get an equal and opposite reaction, sometimes maybe even a greater reaction back the other way. So if they're... If they're not happy with Tucker Carlson coming to Canada and, and standing up at a podium saying things that really, I would say, reflect what the views are of the people in the audience, then they really need to look in the mirror to see what, what it was that sparked 
that kind of reaction to begin with. It was their authoritarianism. They created this mess, okay, 100%, and they're not taking any responsibility for it at all. And for them to sit there and, and, and chastise Danielle Smith, she should be taking care of uh, the homelessness. It's not, no, that was a federal issue. Homelessness, the drug addiction, everything else, they fell short, and now they're trying to put the blame on Danielle Smith. Okay, and anybody that uh, that moves to that, they want to call it right. I don't call it uh, far right. I call it just right, period. Okay, and I stand yeah. up. You know what? I think Danielle Smith should be running the goddamn country. That's me. Yeah, you know? yeah, I, I, I like her a lot. And, you know, she, as she said, she doesn't um, pre-screen people that she meets. And just because she <laughs> met him on stage or whatever doesn't mean she agrees with everything that he says but uh you know i i don't i don't think tucker i didn't i did not see i've not watched the entire speech from tucker carlson last night but uh or yesterday but i haven't heard anything yet it sounds like it was across a line or um you know a approached any kind of extremism did you see, hear anything along those lines no, there was no violence incited. Okay, he didn't say anything along those lines. Violence incited, uh, uh, kill this guy, kill that guy. There was none of that shit. Okay, so the liberals are just, they're in hot water and they don't know how to get out. They're like a frog, a frog in hot water. Okay, and they, they can't jump out of this one. Okay, they can't. With all the scandals that have compounded on the liberals, you know, I'm surprised they're still around. You know, they're creating the issue that's going to happen. If they don't step down and do the right thing, okay, and the NDP don't hold their feet to the fire and call for a goddamn uh, uh, vote of non-confidence and get us to do an election, what do they expect? You fight fire with fire. And it's going to come to that. I don't want to see it come to that. But they're going to create it. And then they could try and self-justify it. See, we told you so. We told you so. Fuck that. Well, you know, when when Tucker Carr called the prime minister's office and said he was coming to Canada to, to liberate Canada, um, on, on the surface, that sounds like a joke. And I did laugh, and I think it is funny. And at this point, you can't take that too seriously. That being said, I think there is an element of seriousness to it because you're hearing it not just from him, but also from Lieutenant Steve Rogers, Jackson Hinkle, and I've heard it from others. So I think there is some strange seriousness about it that makes me uneasy. I don't like that kind of rhetoric. I think that there is a degree of, of uh, as I say, seriousness to it. So I called the prime minister's office the next day and said, what are you going to do about it? Left him a message. That reporter just asked the same question of those members of parliament. Should he have been arrested at the border if you don't like what he has to say? Now, it hasn't risen to that level yet. But when I say there's a level of seriousness to it, I have noticed that some people seem to actually want the United States to invade the country. I mean, and again, I have to point at Justin Trudeau for creating that environment where people are so fed up that they would rather have the United States invade the country and take us over than live under our current system of government. It, it, it kind of blows my mind, but I actually had some people phone me and say, you know what? I heard Tucker say that he's coming to liberate us and I think we're ready for it. I, I think we're ready for the United States to, to, to come up here and, and uh, and hold the government accountable and, you know, all of that rhetoric. And I'm like, I, I really I get it, but I, I don't want the United States to invade us. Um, and then on the flip side of that, Leo, I'm seeing also some pushback from people within the, the freedom movement or whatever is left of it. Uh, criticizing Tucker Carlson and, and pointing out some kind of weird things that are going on, specifically about a guy that was a trucker that he interviewed uh, in, in his latest uh, episode on X. And, there, and people are saying the guy isn't actually a trucker, that he's some sort of a plant. I'll show people that afterward. But can I get you to comment on that? Any any thoughts on 
all of that, you know, let's come up. We're going to come up to Canada and, uh, and, and, you know, take over, like liberate the country. In fact, he said it again in the latest episode of uh, his show on X. My, my comment to that is I'm conflicted on it. Okay. And my conflict, I'm conflicted okay. for this reason. I only live one mile from downtown Detroit. Okay. So I've been Americanized my whole life. Uh, the border really don't start past you. You know what I'm talking about, Rick. Okay, yeah. that's London, Ontario, and you're in between. Okay, so you're part of what would what would take place. Okay, and a lot of people have been saying it for years down here, and I hear it. You know, have the referendum get southwestern Ontario into Michigan, it's where we belong. Okay, I've lost my Canadian identity a long time ago, way before the Liberals took power. We're talking. The, the day that they came out with the melting pot and everything else, uh, this land is your land, this land is our land, from the Arctic, Arctic Circle to the Vancouver Island or wherever, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. We lost our identity a long time ago. Now, we're paying what we're paying, and it's, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. The food prices, the housing prices, everything else, the gas prices... There's no reason for it. You know, when I heard Trudeau today, uh, you haven't been there yet in the show. I don't know if you're going to show him at the caucus uh, meeting that he had. Okay, what he was talking about today that I really found very funny was it him saying that uh, Pierre, Pauly, Evan, the conservatives are not about the environment. This and He started talking about his accomplishments with the EV companies, okay, and Dow Chemical. Dow fucking chemical. They're not very clean people, Dow Chemical. Okay? This plastic bags scandal, okay, uh, right here. They make great lunch bags, but folks, these are still made out of polyurethane, which is plastic. They're winding up in our in our dumps as we speak right now. I have over probably 25, 30 of these bags at my house to go grocery shopping with. Now, if one gets meat in it, I can't use that bag again. I got to throw it in the garbage. Where's it going to go? It's going to go to the dump. There's thousands of these, thousands and thousands of these bags already in the dump, where it takes a lot longer to break down than the normal plastic bags that we had, right? So everything yeah. that this liberal government's doing, then, is wrong. Okay, they have to. It don't matter if they acknowledge it and stand up and say, oh, uh, even an apology at this point in the game is no no good. That apology should have came a couple years ago for the convoy people. Okay. We made a mistake. Not let the courts rule it. And then you sit there and, and mainstream media will sit there and uh, uh, word it differently. You broke the law. Now, if anybody should be held for treason in this country, high treason, is now that i just seen it, it's Justin Trudeau. You broke the law. You shared information with the five eyes, okay, on the convoy truckers, normal people, bank accounts, everything else. The five eyes. Well, I'll sort of tell you, five eyes, you're not going to see what's coming around the corner this time around. And if Trudeau don't step down very soon, it's going to get bloody. I smell it, I can taste it, and I hear it on the street. Well, I hope it doesn't come to that, obviously, and we've had many conversations about that, but I do see the frustration as well, so I know exactly what you are talking about, sir. And uh, it's uh, it's very concerning. And uh, that's why I think there is actually a level of seriousness to this, this talk of we're coming to Canada to liberate you or the SOS campaign from Lieutenant Steve Rogers. So I'm concerned about the preservation of Canadian sovereignty. And, you know, in, in that vein, we are almost revisiting um, issues that were explored even during incidents like the War of 1812. It is. I'm concerned about where my next fucking meal's coming from. Okay. Yeah. Tom Morazzo said it right last night on uh, Shadow Davis. Okay. He was, he was on the show last night. The nine meals effect. And that goes by uh, go without nine meals in a row and see what happens. And he said, my own grandma, if she went without nine meals in a row, she'd be kicking down the neighbor's door with a shotgun looking for food. 
So a lot of people better get their shit in gear because, like I said, I'm worried about where my next meal is going to come from. And I make over $100,000 a year. Now, the poor folks out there at 50, 60, or even less, 70, or even less than that, shit's going to hit the fan soon, Rick. I can smell it. I can smell it like that. I like eating. I try and come on your show and eat something. I just had a Twinkie. That's what I think about the liberals. You you think we're actually that close to a reaction that severe? Go nine meals. Go with go nine meals in a row without without eating. And see what happens. You're going to get a reaction. The food banks are already depleted. The refugees are bringing in. They've already got their hands in that. Okay, it's gone. The missions. Not as nice as the mission was with all the food donations. Now there's still people out there helping. Uh, but man, where you? Like I said, can America come over here and take Southwestern Ontario? I'd sign it. I'd sign a referendum in a heartbeat in a New York second. So, let's say the U.S. say say Tucker decides to lead an invasion. Okay, I'm laughing, but I shouldn't be. Or, you know, so he gets Jackson Hinkle on his left and he gets Lieutenant Steve Rogers on his right, which is reflective of the politics. And and then he's maybe in the middle. And they come up here with, a, I don't know, a, a pellet gun and a hockey, and they're wearing their hockey helmets. And they, they stage their invasion of Canada. They And no problem because we don't have a military left. Would you be in favor of joining the U.S. or splitting the country up somehow? I mean, I'm I'm hearing talk even from, you know, one of the reasons that event was held out in Alberta is because there's a strong and growing independence movement, a separatist movement out there that is, I would say, conservative in nature, in ideology, uh, that people here in the East are maybe not entirely aware of. Uh, but it's growing out there, and I think that's partly what that event last night was about. It's because you've got that that political um, movement happening that supports an event like Tucker Carlson's. So, what do you think? Are you would you be in favor of something like that? Would we be better off? Yes, and my reason why, and my big reason why, is the Quebecois, that party, the Quebecois party. Okay. They're only in Quebec, but they're calling the shots for the rest of the country. They shouldn't even be a political party. Okay. Quebec is their own little world. They got their, it's cheaper to live in Quebec. It's cheaper to, to buy food. It's cheaper to buy booze in Quebec because of their representation by who? The Quebecois party. And they always use that thing called, oh, we're going to separate if you don't, we don't get what we want. Yes. So. As for Alberta, Alberta should have left a long time ago. Okay, and I'm, I'm in favor of that. I'm in favor, like I said, of, well, Toronto will never leave. They're all liberals. But southwestern Ontario, move the border. You know, I'm paying 66% in tax. Not just me, you are. Everybody watching this show right now that pays taxes, okay, in some way, some form, 66%. So every dollar, every dollar that I put up, okay, I'm only seeing... 36 cents of my dollar that comes back into my pocket. And that's wrong. Yeah. When I look south of the border, though, or north of the border, in your case, because Detroit is actually north of Windsor, but when I look across the border to the United States, I see a whole lot of problems down there, too. And a lot of them are the same pro kinds of problems we have up here. So what do you think would actually be better if we split the country up and had portions of it join the United States. It's affordability. That's that's the politics. It don't matter where you go in the world. Your politics are going to be politics. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's the affordability. You know, should we be getting gouged the way that we are for the services that we get? You know, our health care is a joke. Okay. Yeah, it's free. But you'll be waiting 48 hours to see that free doctor when you really need him. Okay, uh, it, it's a joke. You know, 
Canada's crumbled to where the, the point, like I said, I lost my Canadian identity. You know, I hear the world, okay, and uh, to places like Britain and Sweden and everywhere else, now they want to get a draft going for people. Listen, that ain't ever going to happen. It ain't mm-hmm. ever going to happen. They want this war machine going. Joe Biden's done. Okay, he's done. The best place for southwestern Ontario would would be Michigan. They knew it all along, too. You know, all we have is that the waterway that divides us in a bridge, in a tunnel, maybe two bridges someday, right? Uh, But I'm for it. As for Alberta leaving, they should have left a long time ago. You know, they have what? The natural resources. Use them. There's no reason why somebody in Iraq or Saudi Arabia don't even pay for gas. It's three cents a liter for gas. Well, we have the biggest, one of the biggest oil reserves in the world in Alberta, and they're paying how much? A dollar thirty a liter. Yeah. You know the government likes to put a stranglehold on our resources. What's next? Well, we know what's next. Water. We hold uh, what? The third, third largest water reserve in the world, fresh water. The water Second or life. third, I guess, yeah. Right. It's huge. It's massive. Okay. And water is going to be the ultimate gold. You can't drink your gold. You got to drink water to survive. Right. So water, water is going to be a hot commodity. And we're going to let the, uh, the, the next Canadian government or somewhere down the line rape and pillage the village. Okay, and sell our resources the way that they are to countries like, ooh, China, the Middle East, whoever. No, those are our resources, not the Canadian government. The Canadian government comes in, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, they're they're looking out for our best interests. They're not. They never have. If they did, we wouldn't have a debt. Yeah, well... They, uh, they certainly. I hear exactly what you're saying about the resources, and and I, I agree that Alberta has been getting a bad deal. They, uh, they should be a wash in money. You know, everybody in Alberta should be living in prosperity. There's no reason they shouldn't be, and yet the oil remains in the ground, and they can't get it to market. And they have all kinds of problems with their healthcare system. Over, I think it was 60 some percent of the doctors surveyed out there are thinking of quitting and leaving the healthcare system, maybe even moving out of the province because they, their practices are not financially viable. Right. So we've got serious, serious problems. No question about that. Well, I work with a, a guy tonight. Uh, and it's funny because I, I apprenticed with him back in 1989. Okay, uh, for what we do today, right? Uh, but he's working with me now. But he came back from Fort McMurray. He was working up there in uh, uh, the oil sands area, right? And he was telling me last night, which I thought was weird, that if you're a native and you're in Fort McMurray in the oil sands, just being a native from that res, they're paid stipends every quarterly, $25,000 a pop. So the average native gets hundred thousand dollars free for doing nothing all Albertans should be getting that well certainly the uh, you know the wealth is being left in the ground out there and I, I have said for a long time that these environmentalists the environmental groups are being funded by foreign interests not to protect the environment but simply to ex- exert political pressure in ways that force us to leave our resources untouched so that we then become dependent on Middle Eastern oil. And uh, that makes us uh, a slave to them. So that's the way I view it. It, it, You know what? I view it the same. You know, when we have politicians out there that are blatantly caught red-handed for conflict of interest and they're still in power, Houston, we have a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's criminal. Criminal, criminal, criminal. You know, look at, (laughs) I like how you flick that three times. It is, okay? Open your eyes, folks. 
that's the good thing about Maverick Multimedia because my eyes are wide open every day. They, I'm like a little baby when I got on the show, like a newborn baby. I was like this. And then slowly my eyes started opening and going, you know, a lot of these people are right that are on your show, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, they call it conspiracy theorists, this and that. Like a lot of people today, even uh, <coughs> I found, I watched Rebel News before your show, and they were talking about the uh, the dude that went into the city hall there in uh, Edmonton, right? A lot of yep. folks, okay, because mainstream media is not, uh, the Edmonton police didn't release the name. And it's funny because last night I commented before any names were released, I said his name was probably uh, Mohammed Abdullah, Zach, whatever, right, uh, in a comment. And sure as shit today, when I watch Rebel News, guess what? He's one of those guys. Okay, from Gaza. Gaza, yeah. right, sympathizer. And uh, your mainstream media is still not putting it out there. And there's a video of the guy doing a video before he went in there with all his garb, his uh, Molotov cocktails and his guns and uh, his uh, Gaza snakehead shit they put on their heads, okay? Okay. Uh, Mainstream media is not telling you. We're under attack. Okay, yeah, Windsor, I have. Yeah, Windsor, I have. Even Windsor, Rick. Sorry to cut you off. Windsor City Hall. Did you hear what happened there? No, not no. I don't think so. What are you talking about? Because mainstream media won't tell you. There was a, an incident there, too, where somebody vandalized the Transformer, and they got him on video. And he's a Mohammed Abadakabuli, whatever, right? So that's two city halls, one in Edmonton and one in uh, in Windsor, Ontario. Okay, we're under attack, period. And mainstream media don't want to tell you that because guess what? Oh, uh, you can just just get shot or get stabbed or whatever, right? Uh, uh, and they'll write it off the way that they want. We're at war. Yeah, here I'll uh, I'll show you that video from Edmonton. I also have a picture of the guy close up here. So there's the guy in Edmonton City Hall. Security cam. I I guess that's I I don't know. If, I guess it's not security camera footage, but some sort of footage that somebody shot. The camera's moving, so somebody must have shot it with a cell phone or something. And I've got uh, I've got this guy's picture as well. Yeah, mainstream media is trying to write it off as he was a disgruntled worker and all kinds of shit, right? But then you see the video that he posted from his vehicle. Here it is. Watch this shit. Yeah, here I'll I'll actually run the video then. Here, that's just a still shot. But hang on a second. Here, I have I have a copy of his video. I want to run the full thing here we go okay i also have the me the media release from police that i obtained so here we go assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters um before i do my mission i want you all to know that i am not a psychopath i do not believe in bloodshed i am not one of these monsters that hurt children that hurt innocence and that promote wars or uh, the civilization of our society. I'm just tired of seeing the tyranny and corruption taking over our society and our lives. Um, good, honest, and God-fearing men and women must be our doctors, law enforcement, diplomats, politicians, and teachers that raise up, uh, rise up against this wokeism disease that's leading our generation into deception. We need good men and women in all workforces uh, to promote a pro-human life. We need to rise up against this uh, inflation, housing crisis, the unrest uh, that's happening between us because of multiculturalism due to religion, race, and all that stuff. This needs to come to an end with one another. And or anything or anyone that uh, leads us into destruction, we must rise and put a stop into it. Leaders, officials, and anybody that has hands into this um, corruption into this genocide that's going on in Gaza and throughout the world. Anybody that is uh, destabilizing other countries, hurting their community, uh, what do you call, should feel ashamed of themselves. And inshallah, we will rise against you guys and we'll put you on trial. 
part of this agenda. We're not here for no reason. This is a man-made war. This is a man-made uh, immigration crisis that we're all here. Anybody that is uh, destabilizing other countries, hurting their community, uh, what do you call, should feel ashamed of themselves. And inshallah, we will rise against you guys and we'll put you on trial. As immigrants, we must understand that we are part of this agenda. We're not here for no reason. This is a man-made war. This is a man-made uh, immigration crisis that we're all here. But uh, instead of hate and anger in our hearts, we must spread love, uh, respect one another, show honesty with one another, and promote pro-life and work with one another uh, to build our economy, our country, um, and promote strong and pro-human life. We must respect the Canadians' laws. And we must stand with the owners of this land and Canadians shoulders to shoulder to fight racism, to fight this inflation, to fight this uh, rising of costs, to fight our tax money going into this genocide that's going into this all these wars, to weapons that's destroying all these countries. We must all stand united and fight this off and promote a healthy social life, healthy uh, health system, healthy education. We got to start... Um, taking control of our lives and taking control of how we spend our money, how, uh, what do you call, I have a good life, I have a beautiful wife, I have beautiful children, I love them dearly, but I cannot sit back and let this happen. I cannot watch our society crumble into darkness. We all need to rise up. We all need to stop uh, being on our phones. We got to uh, promote a healthy social life where we all communicate with one another, see each other, um, we gotta stop all this racism at work, at outside. We gotta stop bullying. We gotta stop hate. We gotta be in control of our tax, how it's spent, and the tax money has to be spent on us, and it has to be spent on something that is pro life, pro human, and something that is beneficial for us and our children. <laughs> جوانارا و اشتکارا به چارارا ایچ وقت زرال نراسانین همیشه دارای دروز جنگ کنین همیشه سربلن باشین همیشه کوشش کنین که زندگی خوب داشته باشین and that goes for all of us we need to start filtering our water we need to watch what we're eating we gotta start eating healthy our officials need to start promoting healthy choices healthy diet, exercises they need to unite us all as one and we all gotta start doing something positive for our society. Look what's happening. We all know what's going on and we cannot turn a blind eye. I'm not turning a blind eye. Salam alaikum brothers and sisters. Inshallah, we'll, I'll succeed with my mission. If I don't succeed, I know somebody else will succeed for me. Salam alaikum. I'm gonna let you guys talk first. Hello, how are you, Gail? Hi. I was actually talking in, I was going to bring a topic, but uh, I will yeah. say this, now that I've heard more of that content, that is, uh, uh, there's a little more there than what I've heard on social media. And the one thing I always say is we have to be careful about cherry picking and only picking out certain pieces out of, you know, what someone's saying. So uh, just like, you know, whatever Tucker Carlson said, I've seen this happen across the board with, you know, people pick something out and what i've mainly seen on social media from this person was a little bit different than what i just heard um to be honest i think this is someone who is sounds more confused and um yeah there, i have a, many many more questions and now that i've heard more of that i i think we we definitely need to there needs to be an examination of everything that uh that he said but one of the things i did find interesting is that how little coverage this has got. I mean, for someone to go in to a municipal office with a gun shooting up and for it not to be a much bigger story, whatever the background is. And, you know, I, I do, this is something I feel strong about too. Like we have to be careful. We don't just come at him because of his name or his accent. Um, I think uh, that's the main question I have is I want to hear all about this, but it sounds like someone very, all over the place too it sounds very uh a lot of what he's saying seems like uh, and some of it contradicts things as well so because i mean he's saying pro-life and yet he goes in with a gun and I, I that doesn't seem to be um yep. very strong if you're uh if you're wanting supporting life and supporting 
um, a better society. I don't know if going in with a gun into a municipal office, which must have terrified people that have that are not making some of these decisions, right? So that's the other thing. You're going after some people that um, I can't even imagine what that would be like to live through, right? Some of the people that worked in that office. Um, and these are frontline people. These are working people that, um, and that's, yeah. So that's my thoughts on that now that I've heard more of the, uh, what he was talking All right, about. well, let's get Leo's thoughts and we'll come back to the Tucker Carlson stuff because I know you certainly want to comment on that. And what do you think, Leo? Uh, if it was voting time, I would have voted for that guy. His great speech until he got to the part of Gaza and everything else, right? Uh, this is our immigration. He wasn't born here. This is bad immigration. He's been here for a while because his English is pretty damn good. Okay. And this is what happens when you don't vet and screen and you just let anybody into our country. You're going to get this. There's a lot of Canadians that feel like that guy. Don't get me wrong. On some of the shit that he was talking about politically speaking. Okay. The cost of living, everything else. There's a lot of Canadians born Canadians that feel that way, right? Do we, so, know, do we know though where he was? For, I, I just want to be, I don't think we know that. So like, I, I'm always reluctant to jump into the, how he got here. That's the only thing. I, I think I can speak to the issue at hand of more, um, the issue of violence and, uh, and how this is covered. Right. So, um, this seems, yeah. You, you said it right, Gail. This should have been a huge story. Massive story. Okay? Yeah. And it just wasn't. Uh, like, people even in Alberta, I, I put it up on my Facebook page. People are contacting me going, what are you talking about? And even my own brother, I seen it on the news, and they scrubbed it on the news into a different, uh, you know, he's being charged with arson and something else. Not terrorists. Not terrorism. Okay? Yeah. Right. So they're trying to downplay it because, you know what, it's going to hurt the liberals because why they want to bring in what another half a million uh, immigrants into the country. Well, if this is your immigration plan, I don't want them. I believe in good immigration, fair immigration. Okay, you cross that a border. Uh, but this, the immigration that's going on now, it's anybody comes in, nobody's vetted. We don't know who's who. This is the media release from. Edmonton police uh, talks about the incident on January 23rd, entered the building from the parkade. Um, he had incendiary devices believed to be Molotov cocktails that caused one small fire outside an elevator. He fired several rounds from a long gun into the ceiling walls and windows. No one was struck by gunfire. He then dropped the firearm on the floor, as we saw, and surrendered to a City Hall Security Commissioner who detained him until police arrived moments later. Uh, his name is Benzani Sarvar, 28 years of age, charged with six charges, reckless discharge of a firearm into place, use, place, throw, explosive substance, arson of property, possess incendiary material, use of firearm while committing offense, and careless use of firearm. Those don't sound nearly serious enough to me in terms of charges. Um, EPS is aware of a video circulating that may be related to the incident. They're reviewing the video and they're working closely with our national security partners on this investigation, which is a politically correct way of saying they're taking a look at this to see if it is an act of terrorism. And uh, I'll throw it back over to you, Leo. Well, where were the five eyes when we needed them? Okay, this guy obviously might be a lone wolf. Who knows? Uh, looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck. It's a duck. The guy's a terrorist. Quack, quack, he's a terrorist, okay? Uh, we've been called terrorists for less. Why ain't he being charged under the Terrorism Act? I mean, let, me ask you, let me ask you guys a question. And Leo, I think you already answered this, but listen to, to what this guy said. What did, what did he talk about? He's talking about doctors, wokeism. We have to rise up, he says, against wokeism. 
uh, it's a pro-human agenda, which I hear people like Alex Jones say all the time now. He's on Team Humanity. So is this guy, apparently. He, um, I can't read my own handwriting here, but it, he talks about immigration. He talks about being an immigrant and being here for a reason, but at the same time says that he need, we need to support the owners of this country, which would be the First Nations peoples, which we hear a lot of um, rhetoric about even within the freedom movement um, and from people like Justin Trudeau alike, talks about tax money, the economy, inflation, uh, the immigration crisis, which I guess he's, he seems to feel affects him as well. Um, but I'm not sure that he's looking at it from exactly the same perspective as, as we would, but immigration certainly um, on his agenda. I think when he's talking about pro-life, he's talking about things like abortion, talking about the education system, no doubt, given his political ideology and leanings, he's probably uh, against drag queen story time and everything that would go with that. Um, and then he goes into even things like filtering water and being careful about eating healthy food, which again is this exact same kind of stuff that I hear from people within the freedom movement who are worried that the food is killing us, that the chemtrails are poisoning us, that the water is killing us because it's got fluoride in it and other chemicals. And I mean, I go down this list and I don't see anything on here at all that contradicts or, or, or runs contrary to what say a typical freedom fighter or maybe even, you know, conservatives um, might, might um, subscribe to that being said, you know, there, there's something that triggered this guy. And as I've been saying for quite a while, there is in my view, a giant psyop going on and people are being manipulated. They are being fed information in a particular way that affects them psychologically. And then at certain points, something happens to radicalize them and they take radical actions like this guy did, or like, um, what was the guy's name? Adrian Aspiro, the guy who went to the Robert F. Kennedy Jr. event and uh, was heavily armed and it looked like he might be there to try to assassinate the, the presidential contender. Uh, I, I'm seeing it over and over again. It's a pattern. It's a cycle. And I think we need to be very aware of it. It's concerning to me because what this guy says, I hear other people saying. And the other thing, and Leo, nothing against you, but even when I hear people say, say things about our public officials like they are criminals, that kind of talk reinforces a belief or an attitude that these politicians, these bureaucrats must be held accountable. And if someone is radicalized to the point where they are will ready to take action, they will take action as we just saw this guy take action now. And I, I'm sorry to say it, but you know, we've we've also seen and we've had recordings released by even Veterans for Freedom. I've released information from people within like a, an element within the freedom movement, but whatever they are, where they have also called out for exactly the kinds of actions that we just saw this guy take in Edmonton. So as far as I'm concerned, there is something really wacky going on out there and and it's it's involves the internet. It involves psychological man manipulation, mass formation, psychosis. It's all related to these massive protests that we are seeing. People are being manipulated. We need to be aware of it because it is resulting in some cases in people being radicalized to a point where they are being triggered to take actions like that guy just took. It's it's uh, it's affecting their mental health. It's affecting the mental health of people. And this, in my view is an is a uh, and I can't prove it but it matches everything it's a pattern and it's very concerning to me because I see people who otherwise would be very stable and level-headed and even when I listen to this guy I can't disagree with a lot of what he is saying but something has happened to him where he takes it to the next step which he crosses a line and it becomes completely unacceptable and I'll throw it back out to you guys to get your thoughts yeah, Rick, I just want to say this, um, and then I'm probably going to have to jump off shortly, but, um, yeah. you know, the, we have to be very careful that uh, we sometimes, what we're saying, the other side, you know, when we're looking at how people are charged, I think 
you know, to jump to say that, you know, terrorism charges, I don't know if we have all the information. And this is, this is, you know, mm -hmm. I come more from that, you know, curiosity place where I always say, first, let's find out what's going on before we jump to what a person is. Cause we see it all yeah. the time. Sometimes we get very upset when they jump to it's a white supremacist, right? So it's that, and, and I get yeah. it that we, that does happen, but you know, uh, two wrongs don't make a right as well. So I, I think that we have to be really careful in this case. Yep. And I think there is something, you know, I've done work in the past where I've like more from a marketing perspective, granted, but in the area of mental health. And I, and I think that we have to really look at what people are dealing with. And um, that's why I said we hit, a lot of his comments seem to be a bit all over the place to a certain degree, but I wouldn't say they were all either from the right or the left. I think, um, you're right, something. And people right now do get triggered very easily. That's a term triggered. And, you know, mm -hmm. and then we often use that term too often. I think, you know, I've seen this happen where people where it's almost like, before we get into this talk, you know, you may get triggered. And it's almost like people go, Oh, I'm going to be like, you're almost kind of suggesting to them, right. And, uh, and I think that's causing a lot of problems as well is that people now are almost, um, you know, we're, we're feeding that to them in terms of, um, yeah. you know, uh, and people say, you know, the term anxiety gets used when it's not really anxiety. I mean, if you have anxiety about a test, no, that's normal. Like that's something that, you know, if you're stressed about something, there's certain things that are normal that we've now made almost an extreme, right? That if, if you have to do something difficult, it becomes, um, you know, that that's the problem as opposed to, uh, what is, you know, what used to be, and I, I don't know, normal, right? I mean, it's a term, what the heck does that mean? But uh, yeah. I think in terms of this case, I like, I think we need to get more information, but Rick, Definitely. I think you're bringing up some points in terms that we need to examine. Unfortunately, I don't think we're that in that place to be able to step back and really look at this. Instead, we're getting in, we'll get into attack mode, right? It's going to be and that's what I, that's where social media does fan the flame sometimes. And I work in that area. So I, I see that, that there's uh, extremism on each side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, something's happened in his head, right? Something's taken all these things that he believes, but then something has twisted, turned on a switch or something to make him act out in this way. And I don't know what it is exactly that happens to people when, that happens, but there's a pattern there. Um, and when you, when I go back and I look at some of some of the recent incidents involving shooters, the guy at the uh, the Colorado amusement park who went in heavily armed uh, ended up committing suicide. Writing on the wall again, I am not a killer. Like this is a pattern, and exactly the same kinds of language that that they use when they when they make these post these videos um again even here he's like you know he's he's pro-life and he wants to it's all very positive stuff and then it's like the guy in colorado he was conflicted in some way in his mind to the point where he killed himself and, and writes on the wall i'm not a killer but he went there heavily armed apparently to kill people it's something really messed up and i wish i had more answers for people, but this is very concerning to me. I, uh, it, it, this goes beyond, mm -hmm. beyond I think, normality. That's for sure. Well, and we've talked about this, Rick, you know, um, yeah. and I've always said this, it, you know, any extreme view on any side is never healthy. I mean, there's, and this is my Pollyanna side of me that I believe we need more balance. You know, there's a reason they say, you know, when I'm at the gym, I work on balance, right? You're supposed to work on balance so that you have, that you're not, mm -hmm. you know, if you're, if you're really strong on right side and weak on the left, that's not good for you. Right. It's, and we've sort of lost an ability to step back and, um, you know, examine things without jumping into attack mode. And that's what I see all the time. You know, people want to attack first before they actually do the research and listen and, and, uh, you know, until we go listen, you brought up a good point about the Tucker Carlson, you know, and I have it on my list. I've listened to most of it, but I want to listen to the whole talks. Um, we don't do that. We just hear, we take out a piece of it 
And then everybody jumps on and says, and I know when they're saying about the LGBTQ with Tucker Carlson, I, I believe what he's, I understand what he said. And in the context, I mean, that's the other thing is some of this is when you're a public speaker and you or comedians, I mean, they use humor and we now have almost lost any sense of humor about any topic. And, you know, that's what baffles me. Like, you know, people are complaining about comedians that are saying things. I'm like, well, why did you go see <laughs> turn them off if you don't like whoever, right? It's, I, I always find that mm -hmm. interesting when people are, you know, go to a comedy show and then get mad when the person says something that offends them. It's like, well, did you not know that you were going to see who you were going to see? Do you think those members of parliament, the liberals, do you think they have, do, do you see anything from their perspective at all? Like, is there anything about, is there any legitimacy to their, concerns well i was listening to the clips you played and i want to stress that that i only based on the clips you shared right and i was actually going to write something like is this satire because i actually thought like number one is it satire but number two is i often find it interesting when they're putting all this energy into this and they're giving a greater platform for tucker carlson for pierre Polyev. like you're giving more people will go out and maybe listen to it and for me, this comes back to when you look at that crowd of people, um, I saw it with Jordan Peterson. I saw it with uh, Tucker Carlson and I've seen it. Um, who was the other one? Oh, if you look at Joe Rogan. Right. Yeah. So what I look at it from whether whether you like or dislike what they're saying, you have to look at the um the crowds of people that are coming out so instead of saying all of those people are dumb stupid racist misogynist instead why not say hey what is it about these people that you like like can we learn about why people are on mass going to see these people i i was just talking to someone tonight about this um you know uh with trump doing so well and it's like no one is asking why, why is he doing well? Who is supporting him? And instead there's this all out attack on the people supporting him. And I know people who are supporting Trump, but I, and you know, not everybody is dumb or stupid or um, whatever other, you know, language they're using to describe these people. Um, but instead it's, you know, you have to understand the U.S. system and no one understands, it seems, politics or history or the economics anymore. So what's happening is they make it about, well, if you like Trump, you're a bad person. But there, no understanding of really there's a two party system. Right. So it's like so people are not really stepping back and understanding why and that's a whole other show we could talk about. And I'm fascinated by that because, you know, as someone that comes from, you know, a place of curiosity, I want to know why. So why are the, why are so many people filling these auditoriums? And we see, I'm sure there's people in the comments are <laughs> maybe dropping the why, but um, until we can. It's because it's, it's the rise of populism and, and nationalism. That's why. Yeah. And I think people though, I, as someone who's talks to a lot of people that aren't necessarily overtly political, they're probably not people that are listening to your show, Rick, but I, I really want to mm -hmm. talk to people like, and see where they're at. And mo a lot of people mm -hmm. feel that they're not being heard. And, you know, I've spent time in the States and listened to people. And, uh, you know, I met one time a woman that was, you know, a big Trump supporter. And, you know, one of the things I've learned is that people are feeling they're not being heard. They feel that their issues aren't being taken seriously. And they feel that he is going to be the person that will champion the um, more of the working class. And mm -hmm. it, it, it kind of boggles the mind for some people because they think historically that would have been more on the Democrats. And here in Canada, that was what we thought was the NDP party, you know, for... Yeah. Most of my adult life, I always thought the NDP was the party of working class, of, um, you know, the uh, blue collar, for lack of a, you know, that's the term. Um, and yet now, even people that I've talked to in the NDP have said, yes, that Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives are really not only, you know, they're 
They were taking the lunch, eating the lunch, uh, taking the rest of the meals too. And it's, it's, it's a fascinating study of what's happening in terms of politics in Canada uh, because there's been a big shift. And, um, you know, I come from the areas I mentioned of public relations, PR. I work with people around strategy, developing their brand. So I look at all of these topics from that lens, right? So when you look at like a Tucker Carlson, so I saw the intro, I saw the video, that, you know, going up on stage. I mean, it's like he's a celebrity, and whether you, and he did, he's a, you know, as a public speaker, he uses humor. Um, I've, you know, coached people around public speaking. You use humor, you use stories. And, you know, if you start taking pieces out of that overall speech, it can be taken out of context as well. So back to your original question about, you know, the politicians all standing there. I mean, it, yeah. I don't know that that to me would not be my PR strategy. I would have said, move along because <laughs> they're just shining a bigger spotlight. And I think making people that are more even in the middle going, what they were saying makes no sense. And if you go back and listen to the speech, I think people will even scratch their heads even more. Do you want to weigh in on that there, Leo? Yeah, I want to just, draw it back to where you're talking about the uh, the mental health uh, issues and stuff that are going on in the, not just our country and the whole wide world, but uh, sure. yeah. you two both worked for Bell Media, right? Once upon a time? I, no, no, I, I did. did. Yeah. Well, did. I know, no. <laughs> but I still work for mainstream media. I have worked, yes. <laughs> yeah, I looked. I, I was just looking at your uh, profile, uh, Gail. You're uh, the chief curiosity officer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious. I was just curious, so I was looking. Uh, but the uh, the Bell 1-800 process is not working. So when you reach out and touch somebody and call someone, it's just not working. We're falling short on mental mental health, just like we're falling mm -hmm. short on everything in the medical mm -hmm. aspect, uh, cancer, the whole nine yards. You don't... Yeah. Leo, I, I will say this. When it comes to issues around mental health, we are in um... – yeah, that's a – that is a topic I have many thoughts on and also many questions because it has become such a widespread problem. And until we get to the root of the why, right? What, why is it such a bigger problem now? And I think we've, we're kind of feeding into it to a certain degree. And some of that is around, um, you know, talking about triggers or talking about things that almost, get people to feel more worried about it and social media. Um, I work in that area, but I feel our education system is not uh, helping by not teaching about this, not teaching about algorithms, how algorithms work. Uh, that has a great impact on young people. So uh, their mental health, because they're, they don't understand. Like I understand how algorithms work. I understand if I post something, what happens, how people react. I mean, and I know that there's certain posts or certain things that I may say, whether it's in comments here tonight, like you, you know, pe people are going to react. And sometimes, you know, as we talked about, I think last night, Rick, you know, sometimes it's not very nice. Right. But young people don't understand that. So if they are out there posting things and someone says something or they get in down a rabbit hole, that's a, that is a problem and it causes more mental health issues and, um, and educators do not under educators don't understand social media. So how can they teach algorithm? They, they don't even want to do, uh, you know, they still often say just phone into the school. I mean, when my son was in school, I couldn't even email. That was like, Oh no, you can't email the teacher directly because they might get too many emails. I'm like, <laughs> makes no sense at all. I just thought, and that's going back probably 10 years, right? When email would have been the, and I can't even imagine trying to say texting or using WhatsApp or any other. I think we're, I think we're also uh, in the uh, aftermath of big pharma. Okay. People uh, taking uh, Ritalin, Colin, whatever, all the pharmaceuticals out there for uh, their psychological, because it was easy for doctors just to, Hey, here you go. Right prescribe you something, Prozac, the list goes on and on, right? Uh, that's playing a big part on mental health today. Yeah. Okay. 
I, I've never had to go to pharmaceuticals, so I went the other way to uh, natural uh, self self healing stuff, right? Like mm-hmm. cannabis and magic mushrooms and stuff like that. But uh, big pharma has is playing a huge part in what's going on today with mental illness. Like Rick says, it's like a, the the MK Ultra experiment. Something's going on. When you got guys in London, Ontario, running down a family on the sidewalk, okay, uh, and same thing in Toronto, guy running on the sidewalk killing people, we got problems. Now, from my understanding, they were both on psychological uh, uh, pharmaceuticals. I just want to say this too, you know, folks, you know, we are a family here, right? And I know that, you know, sometimes people get lonely out there, and I know that there's been a lot of stress and pressure over the last four years in particular. And if you, anybody out there is feeling down, if you, if you're feeling like you, you need to act out in some way, if, if any of this is resonating with you tonight and you need just somebody to talk to, I'm easy to find. So me too. Me too. Um, and I work 12 hour shifts. And if you look at uh, my profile, okay. I'm online somewhere all the time from the hours of uh, two in the afternoon to at least four or five in the morning every day because I'm at work and I got a nice job where I could do this. Right. So if you need to reach out to anybody, reach out to me. It's two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. I'm here. And it's funny. We're on this topic. A friend of mine, uh, Tommy T bear from uh, Bell river. Lost his, son to suicide uh, about five years ago lost a niece a month ago he died a week ago and his son just committed suicide yesterday right wow. and so he's survived by two daughters and a wife now right uh, he's, he's lost both his sons and you know it is it's just method all this right it's it runs deeper than a lot of people think yeah. Well, you know, we've we've seen people with, you know, um, here even, you know, talk sometimes about doing some crazy things. And, and I just, again, want to want to say no matter how bad you think it is, it's never that bad. It just it really isn't. And if you feel like it is, we're here. So this is part of what this is about. This is new form journalism. And it's it's a new medium it's it, and it's it's a community is what it is and we have become a family so we're here for each other and i'm here for you and i've said that before and leo is too or you know just reach out talk to us if you need somebody to talk to just don't do anything crazy like that because you don't need to it's not that bad it really isn't and i Rick, I want to say there's someone who commented, and I do think this is something, it says mental health does not absolve or justify bad behavior. And I think that's another thing that, you know, to examine looking at, um, you know, there are cases that, you know, we have to understand that difference. There are some mental health issues, but it doesn't, it's true. We, we have to be careful. We don't just say, oh, it, you know, we, we let that person off the hook because of an action mm-hmm. they took because, you know, one of the cases I found most interesting, we were having a discussion, uh, my son and some friends one time about, you know, um, different types of justice. And one of the uh, items of discussion was, remember the uh, the person who beheaded the guy on the bus on the, and he's, mm-hmm. yes. well, he's now out. And like, I, I struggle with that because I'm someone who leans generally more towards, you know, if someone can be rehabilitated, you want to, rehabil- but there's certain things just like we were talking about free speech, there's certain things that there are boundaries and lines and certain actions. I don't know if that person, like what if that person goes off medication? Like that was such an extreme case. And I, that's what I think we need to really examine in terms of our justice system and, you know, who gets out. And, and this is where I said, I've talked about this on my show, Curious Minds, because I do really want to delve into looking closer at certain issues. So when I look at, okay, he's out, but then we have this mega trial over mischief for Chris Barbara, Barber and Tamara Lich. Like there seems to be that 
we're putting all these resources because there are there's only so many resources that we have and costs, right? So I, when I see that type of energy expended on a mischief charge versus people that are doing horrific crimes out there, yeah, mental health does not absolve certain things. Um, so the person that did that to that, like that, that has stood out in my mind when I remember hearing that case. And I just think it's, it happened to be a guy traveling on a Greyhound bus. And I think there is something that is uh, dismissive about that, that because it wasn't, you know, it was someone on a traveling by bus. And I don't know, that's, that story still makes my stomach turn. I just, and that when I heard that he's out, I just, that's the type of question I think we need to really get more curious about and figure out how we can make changes in our justice system. Yeah, I agree with that too. Yeah, we certainly need to be looking at all of those issues. The justice system, you know, needs adjustment. Definitely. Well, what I found with the justice system, uh, it's now become uh, the insane asylum. Okay, and I've been in, inside, unfortunately, for my doings uh, as being pro cannabis activist and getting caught, right, uh, for this and that and various things with cannabis. And I noticed a lot of people coming in with mental illness, and right away, the jailhouse doctor gets them on Seroquel. I've never heard of Seroquel before in my life until 2005. Okay, and uh, in comes a guy, they get him on Seroquel. He's like this, the drool's coming out of his mouth. He's just a zombie. Okay, now your sentence expires, and you're kicked out to the curb as a zombie. Right, so. I don't know what the solution is, minus talking to somebody, because you know what, talking to, and, and I, I've seen this happen, especially with uh, recovering alcoholics and drug addicts, okay, uh, in their 12-step program, and sharing one-on-one -on -one with people, and, you know, the program does work if you want it to work, right? So anybody with mental illness, like Gail said, Rick said, reach out and touch someone, right? Uh, I'm available, and I'm pretty versed when it comes down to mental illness. You know, I know a lot about what's going on, and um, you know, I try and solve my mental illness by working 12 hours a day. It's uh, a replacement from one addiction to another, right? Uh, ultimately, it'll kill me, but I feel all right with that, right? With putting the uh, the food and butter and the bread on my on my damn table any way that I can, right? Legitimately. So yeah. this what it is. I have to I have to bail, guys. I do have some work to do. I'd love to stay here all night long. But anybody out there in our group, hit me up on Facebook Live or on Facebook. Uh, message me. You can message Rick the same way too. I don't know about you, Gail. I don't know if you're not on my Facebook, but uh, I have over ten thousand followers. I don't even know who's on my Facebook anymore, right? So I'm more, right. I tend to be on X or Twitter. That's where I'm kind of. I've never been on X. Never been on X. I don't want to go on X because my reason is I don't like Elon Musk. Uh, I think he's uh, mm -hmm. a, well, a sellout and a scammer, but it seems to be working for him, right? So well, we could probably have another discussion about that on another because I, right. I do feel strong. I said 50% of people like him, 50% don't. But why I support Twitter slash X is especially when everything came out of the Twitter files and whether you like him or dislike him, he at least has taken that platform to the point that there's the stories that we're hearing about right now aren't showing up on other platforms or they would get censored. And that's the only place. Now, yes, there's debate about there is some lines where people but generally i'm seeing stories and content there that i see nowhere else and i think it's pushing some of even other media to cover things because of what's on there so it is yeah. because i get uh a lot of my news unless you're now i'm talking more in a mainstream world because there is rumble there's other places but um yeah yeah i look at uh rick was i think rick was mentioning why would he ever call it x and then you just said it, the files, okay, uh, the Twitter files. Well, now it's called the X files. <laughs> ciao, guys. Okay, ciao. Thanks, Leo. See ya.
Yeah, I always, I always have. I mean, Twitter <laughs> slash X is such an interesting topic for me because um, I've been on it for so long and 